Michele Mazzioni, work 27 Bridges. I'm going to present to you uh, Kavatika as a part of the kit first. Um, so, um, Kavatika, we're going to talk about the user workspaces for shared discovery and reproducibility. So, the outline of this presentation uh, is going to be basically three major uh, chunks. The first one is going to be about collaborative workspaces. The second one is like uh, assessing the data, how you can get the data into Kavatika, which means that already like explained uh, a little bit about it. And finally, I uh, just want to give you like a quick uh, uh, overview of uh, some of the research that is already happening on Kavatika in a collaborative way. So collaborative workspaces. Um, before I, I jump into the, uh, the whole uh, basic description, we were asked like if we could try to uh, explain Kavatika to basically pretty much everybody in a very quick way. So uh, this is like the first jump that we got this, like let us know if it makes sense to you or not, but basically the idea is like you got this big amount of data that is like living in this case in the cloud for real, and then you put Kalaska there with a, a lot of uh, smart scientists and researchers, and then you get your answers. So that's pretty much uh, Kalaska is one of the tools that are going to allow our researchers and our scientists to find answers for the <coughs> questions that we have in front of us. So um, what is a, a collaborative workspace? Is what, what you really need to make sure that you have so people and users can actually have a good time when using the system. So um, we think that you need permission uh, for stability, reproducibility, and also, of course, ease of use. Um, it's uh, important that all these four uh, basically are taken care of because I think if you miss one, you will most likely have like people not really engaging with the system. So I want to discuss a little bit about permissions. Um, this is uh, uh, the, the, the first thing about permission is you need a place to put the people together to work. So a collaborative workspace in Kavatika Lingo are called projects, where basically you have like uh, users where you can basically put them together into the project, and uh, they have like the possibility to collaborate in this. A project basically is like your logical way to put together both data and, and applications. In particular, uh, in Kavatika you have two types of permissions. You have like uh, the one that is uh, uh, on a user level and the one that works with the air So the one in user level, this in particular applies if you bring your own data on the platform. It means that all the projects are basically private by default. Only the members of the project have access to this data according to the type of permission that you give to the people that can see the data, they can uh, run application on the on the project, or they can actually have like an administrator role so they can add and remove people over there. Uh, this means that basically in that project you have like total control of who's working and who uh, can see the data in that way. So if you want to bring your data and do the research over there, you can use this type of uh, uh, solution. And at the same time, uh, Kavatika integrates via Air Commons and via DigiGov uh, to basically right now two main uh, data commons. The first is uh, Kids First, where basically you can uh, once you you uh, log in with the error commons, you can connect to all the kit first uh, data, and the regulation is decided by DBGAP. So you need to do a DBGAP, as basically has been explained before, to have access to this data. At the same time, Kavatika is connected with the Cancer Genomics Cloud uh, that um, also is run by seven pages, and basically, oh, with that, you can use uh, um, that application to connect with the ECGA target that also permission are still regulated by DBGAP, you can import those data into the project. So this gives you like the possibility to already integrate two types of data, one the one coming from Kids First and the one coming from, for example, ECGA target in your project if you have already access to this data. <coughs> now the second important part is portability because the important thing here is like you want the possibility to go out and reproduce your research. You don't want to be tied to anything. You want to be able to publish the 
Therefore, we on Carlatica use like uh, the common word for language that is based on uh, open source technology. One is Docker, and that is basically it's like the base to um, Dockerize and then bring the application on the cloud. And then uh, the common word for languages is also open source. It's a global uh, a GH4GH GH basically standard. They started from there. And it's uh, available on uh, GitHub uh, to see, and everybody can con contribute. Seven Bridges is one of the uh, of the party that uh, collaborated with the Common Word for Language. But I want to stress that this is like a, a community effort, and it's made by a lot of different parties. Um, so we support this uh, as a de facto standard on uh, Kavati. So I'll be, you don't have to write CWL by hand. You don't have to basically do any of this type of uh, work. You can use our tool editors and our basic different software to bring your application on the cloud. This means that basically, if you wrote new methods, you create a new algorithm, you have like a new tool that uh, you want to bring on Kavatica, uh, you just have to use the tool editors and then you can <coughs> bring it online. Most likely, if you can run it on the common line, you can easily bring it on the cloud. And this is basically um, already available. You can use it today. At the same time, once you have your tool in, you have like also the workflows. And basically, workflows are like uh, a, a different uh, um, collection of different tools. They connect in a logical way. And our workflow on the Kavatica gives you the possibility with the drag and drop to connect different kind of applications. So for example, in this example here, um, which uh, uh, it doesn't show on the web app, unfortunately, uh, you have like uh, uh, the possibility to add uh, basically application from the right side into the workflow and then, then connect them together. This so means that you can create a complicated workflow and uh, slowly, slowly you can actually add that. Ah, okay, now it's picking up a little bit. <laughs> Took a little bit of time um, So uh, that's basically, it's like the demonstration was talking about. It's like extremely interactive. You can basically create a complex workflow today. And uh, um, But we also uh, have like um, another set of uh, tools that we have like basically developed that complement those, which is basically uh, the, uh, the Radix uh, switch that has like the like composer. And uh, the important part is that you can um, the Rabbix Composer is a desktop application that you can basically install on your laptop to develop locally until you do like functional developing and then it integrates with Kavatica so you can push your stuff directly on uh, the platform and you have like the possibility to run it and scale on the cloud. <coughs> so that was the part about the portability. Now let's talk about a little bit the reproducibility. It's very important when you start to launch uh, a, an application, you want to basically be able to reproduce exactly the same type of results that you had in the past. So this is uh, um, very important from the point of view of uh, remember what you did in the past and also understanding like all the different types of things that you put in. Of course, uh, the more complex is the workflow, the more complicated is to track everything. But on Kavatica, all this is done basically automatically for you. So for example, here you can see that we have on the left side all the inputs that have been uh, used in this, uh, in this task. They basically, like, uh, uh, it was like uh, uh, an optimization run for the kids first. And then uh, all the settings that have been used during this task, and then all the outputs that have been created. And the important part is like that this basically gives you possibility to explore uh, what has been done in the past that we do it completely. If you want, you can simply click edit and rerun and you can basically replicate everything straight up. Uh, the apps and the workflow is defined in CWL, which basically means that you can also take it down, download it, and run it with uh, any executor that supports CWL. <coughs> So uh, in, in detail here, what you see is a screenshot of the app that I was showing before that is basically the workflow that you can see it's a pretty um, beefy workflow. It's quite complicated. It's like the, the part of the alignment and the uh, harmonization that is used in kids first. And you can access the, the CWL that you see on the, on the right, basically like the code version of the workflow that you can actually uh, use and basically program. So this is a, uh, a, an important part because 
you have the possibility to get directly the the code that runs the workflow. Sorry, the code that express the workflow. And uh, last but not least, uh, we try to basically build uh, a system where you can have like uh, a lot of tools, a lot of uh, um, system that are like uh, in different parts that are like easy to use or at least uh, they are like uh, really available to you. So for example, there is like uh, public apps that you can already access the general template used to indicate both tools and workflow. So we have uh, right now more than uh, 356 uh, applications that are ready to go on Cavatica today. They are like they scan from like uh, WGS to Ernestink and all this kind of like uh, uh, there is also manipulation, uh, there is uh, annotation, and um, and also you will, you will have access also to the same Python that the DRC is using to do the harmonization. So for example, if you have like your private data and you want to harmonize them uh, from the genomics point of view, in the same way you can basically bring your own Kavatika, latch the same app, and then you have like basically your data harmonized with all the other data that are harmonized by the DRC. Uh, we have also an uh, integrated, uh, basically, genome browser on the platform that basically lets you, like, uh, investigate, for example, the read of the BAM and have, like, an idea of the different type of uh, variants that are, like, available. This is, like, for a quick view over there. If you are, like, uh, familiar with the uh, uh, genome browser, you know that most people tend to use, most likely, IGB and there is like a quick way to also connect to IGB directly from this page so people can continue to use the tools that they like familiar with at the same time have also this possibility if they want. <coughs> and the uh, last bit I want to touch upon is like the possibility to run Jupyter Notebook and on the on the platform. So it's called Data Cruncher and this basically is uh, an environment to run tertiary analysis where basically you can uh, explore the data that are already on the, on the cloud in your project that you can basically bring it inside. It's, a very, um, it's very interesting uh, to explore a lot of big data in an in interactive way, and so that's why we basically built it like uh, the data cruncher into the Kavatica platform. We support right now Python R and Julia kernel, which basically means you have the possibility to pick your favorite stuff language uh, the way that you feel like. Um, <coughs> so uh, the, the other part about the tertiary analysis is like when a person made a, like a tertiary analysis, this will be same, and the collaborators that are inside that project, they will have like the possibility to explore it and basically to read it. So this means that it's also a nice way to um, have like, a, for example, a narrative text and then other people can actually use the end uh, look at. Okay, so now let's uh, switch to how you get the, the data in Skabatica. Uh, so Vincent already made a demo how you basically bring the data into uh, Skabatica. So basically from the portal, how you, you, you basically uh, bring them in. So right now we call this copy, but I want to stress that actually we link in the file. So there is no storage cost to you. Uh, with the, everything basically is like a Kavatic that gets like a pointer to those files that you want to use. And so there is no cost added and uh, the resource is not duplicated. Simply you have like two ways to look at the same file from two different uh, positions. Uh, so here I have like a slide basically uh, shows exactly what uh, Vince was uh, doing before, and and it's like uh, I select like the file, and then I'm, I'm selecting the one on the project that I have on Kavatica. I click on copy file, and then I have all my files on Kavatica and uh, ready to use. So um, this slide takes a little bit like a. Uh, a step back on the old systems that are like inside the kids first uh, platform that basically Adam and uh, especially Alison are talking about before and basically I just want to make uh, clear how Kavanska is interacting with all the other pieces in this kind of like a much Lego space that we all love so much not at night when you hit them and you didn't see them that thing. So for example, the portal with Kavatica, uh, it gets like the data, and you can export them in Kavatica. The data service brings, every time that there is a new release, 
Avantika imports all the data and the metadata from the data service, so are ready to use when the new uh, when the, when the user wants to use them, they are ready to go. And finally, Avantika via the gem fee can uh, enforce the error commands permission, the DB gap permission basically at the end. So uh, this is like the way that we interact with the, all the other partners, this is kids first, and now this basically fits into the global um, vision. So, I want also to basically demonstrate how you can import today, for example, target data or TCJ data inside the same project on Kavatika. So you can do basically the research that is the, uh, the, the part about the, interoper the interoperability that basically was discussed before. So here we see if the data browser that is on Kavatika, you find this under the target data and then data browser. So here you have the possibility to explore uh, the different kind of like data sets. And once you make a query, you have the possibility to basically import into the project. I'm going to show you very quickly after how basically that looks like. And finally, Kavatika is a, is a platform that basically accepts your data as well. So you can import any type of data that you have and you want to basically use in your research. There are several ways to import this data. There's a common line uploader, there's a desktop uploader, there's an API uploader, and there's also like a a few system based on the same digital file system of product that you can use to bring the data on the platform. So as you can find your choices, there is also the possibility to connect to external S3 uh, volumes if you have them uh, and the import also on Kavatika. Um, so now I want to jump a little bit on the research that has been going on on Kavatika and what's happened so far. So this is basically uh, a graph that has been that is describing the, the harmonization that has been made so far. Uh, I mean, actually, this is up to June, and uh, this number, as the Arizona State basically doubled in the last uh, two months because we got more data available. But here, basically, what I want to express is the type of quick harmonization scale that you can actually do on the platform. And uh, when you see basically the void between the spikes, it's basically daily we were waiting for the data to be ready to be harmonized and when there is the spikes actually it's like how long it takes to launch all this. So for example, we did uh, 1,336 genome in roughly like three to four days uh, from zero to, to finish. And uh, this, uh, as, uh, this is going to be described more by Young Kuhn later, is basically the pipeline that has been used and is being developed from uh, kids first together with us. What we did here was like to optimize the pipeline, so we ported from Widow to CWL1, and we made it that it was running three times faster and two times cheaper than there was the original implementation, uh, let's say the naive implementation when we got it at the first. Um, it's, uh, uh, so this is basically just a, a look on the details of uh, like how the implementation took down the time and basically made the, and halved the cost. Uh, so now, basically, with just that, you just save half of the half of the money to run the new optimized uh, pipelines. So uh, another part that is uh, happening on Kavitika is the joint genotyping. So we get the 1,333, for example, joint genotyping from the Marita court, and uh, um, we applied a map reduce strategy that was based on the Kavitika API. We have joined the data. And then uh, basically we did the joint genotyping on uh, the last task, and we run everything in five days. But this is also uh, basically counting the develop and the basically the troubleshooting for the whole uh, joint genotyping. We uh, we are claiming that we can do this basically in uh, two three days uh, next time. Even though now we have like a, a solid workflow that we can basically use to do all this. So this has already happened, and basically there is also this kind of possibility if uh, one wish to do it. Uh, on top of that, as you know, Kavatika is here for basically the F01. So uh, we want the, the researcher to come online and do their like uh, research on uh, on Kavatika. We have those are two basic examples of projects that have been approved to do uh, analysis on the platform, and they are like basically ongoing as we speak. And uh, <coughs> even though we 
they launched like a few weeks ago for the portal I think that's pretty good. And uh, these are like some of the softwares that we already ported, they were not. So for example, we had like a uh, 365 apps available on Classica, but um, some of the extra ones being at the bleeding edge of the research, they wanted something new that was not there, so we helped them port them on the platform. And this is just like uh, an example of a different type of uh, programs that we have uh, ported and that now are like available for people to to use over there. And um, <coughs> with that, I just want to announce the team very quickly um, for the type of uh, work that basically everybody has done. So there's a lot of people behind this uh, that are like, working um, to make this uh, a great platform. So I just want to send a big thank you to all of them. And now if uh, I have time, I want to switch to basically a uh, little bit of the live demo to basically show you the system in, uh, in operation. So this is a, a, an example of a collaborative project where basically I, um, I have other people in, uh, in the project with me and I put like a, an, uh, an example of the, uh, the description that basically you can write over there. The interesting part about the description is like accept markdown so you can specify uh, what type of uh, project, what type of like research you're doing, so everybody that joins the project understands what basically is going on. Uh, what you see here on the task is basically some of the tasks that I run on uh, on this one. Uh, this is just for demonstration. And uh, for example, here if you click on the task, you can see who has run it. <coughs> One second, I look. It's uh, so. Who we'll has run the task, how much basically cost for the computational point of view, what were the inputs here, what were the outputs, and then you can also explore the file and basically see how, uh, what is the, the content of the file and uh, what type of input has been done. So, for example, this one shows a pump where the index is available, so we have the possibility to see the list straight up on the, on the application. So, um, if I want to import uh, data, from, for example, I'm interested in doing some, uh, let's say, some map file from DCGA, and I want to import it on the project, how do I do that? So I can go on the data here, and then I can go on the data browser, and then uh, once I'm here, I can select the database that I'm interested in. So for example, I can pick DCGA, and then uh, I go into the, the exploration of the, of the data browser that basically plays on uh, the ontology, and I can type up what I want uh, for uh, to bring it. So for example, I'm looking for some math for pancreatic adenocarcinoma, and then I want like those that have like uh, an open uh, acid level. So now that I basically have my query ready, I can basically click. And these are like the different results in which way I can express the query according to the ontology. So for example, if I pick uh, the order in the event in the way that the first one is the most likely the one that you want to use. So uh, kind of like, uh, I feel like you went to Google if you want. So once you do that, you have like the, the files available. And now because those are like, I pick the one that are like open level, so I can basically bring it onto the project. To copy on the project, I can basically copy the file to project. And here, for example, I have like then the list of projects that I can basically copy the file to. And for example, if I want, I can uh, select, I select the kids collaborative project or social. And then when I'm here, I can also say uh, if I want add the tag. So I'm going to say import the from DCGA. And then I copy the file. So when we say copy, it's just a shortcut to basically uh, explain what we're doing about. Below, under the hood, there is a linking. So you can never replicate the file. We have always a pointer to the file because replicating the file is very, it doesn't very big. I mean, in this case, it was a small file. Sometimes the files are very big, especially the genomics file, so you don't want to replicate it. And so the copy is basically linked. And uh, if I now show you the files on the Kids First Collaborative Project, uh, you can see that basically those math files have been imported and that they basically are here for me to use uh, 
um, with uh, <coughs> any type of uh, uh, application that I want to use of those. So for example, I can use map tools to visualize them and uh, all other things that I want to do. It. So um, this is basically the, the way that you can actually use the system. So you can import your kids first data from the portal and then you can get that from uh, uh, the from by the data browser you can import the one from the uh, Antarctica and so forth. Uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. One last thing that it might be interesting is like we have uh, the um, we have on the public project we have like a data crunch with the interactive analysis. So if you click on uh, the public project over there, and then you click on uh, uh, basically interactive analysis. Uh, I'm waiting for web app to catch up with life. <laughs> and here you have like a description that we're trying to basically show the different type of analysis that has been done on a Jupyter notebook that are like available right now. So for example, there is a uh, uh, interactive analysis, and then there is also like a VCS visualization. So let me go here, and then I'm going this one. Okay. So um, if I click uh, on the <coughs> on second, uh, I'm waiting the 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 way back to to see. So those are basically what I was uh, explaining before during the presentation. Uh, like. Uh, possibility to have a iteration analysis that can be um, shared with your collaborators <coughs> excuse me, in the project. So here you see on the file, on the analysis file, if I click here on the analysis uh, of the iPad notebook, uh, I will basically have like the notebook that yeah, loads on the, on the right side, and basically here I have like uh, the result of the analysis. So this is what, like without writing the notebook. If I want, I can simply like just say, Run and then I will have like the possibility to access this module. So if I can go down, so this is like a, 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 a notebook they use like R as a kernel to do the analysis with the uh, And here basically you have like uh, uh, some of the graph that basically shows the F GKM and then below. Other type of graphs that basically are like showing CA and clusters and, and so forth. So those are like basically things that you can do today on Cavatica and you can basically store all this data um, right now. Um, <coughs> so I think uh, I'll leave with that. And um, okay. uh, and there was sorry there was a question on Slack before about. If uh, it's the same importing the, the files from the other browser to go, uh, the project or from the portal, the answer is basically yes, it's the same thing, and you will have uh, the possibility to uh, look at this 